Hans and Luck from 50 Famous Fairy Tales. Hans had served his master for seven years, and at the end of the time, the Hans said, Master, the time I pledged to you is up. I should like to go home to my mother. Please may I have my wages. The master replied, You have served me faithfully and honestly, Hans, for your seven long years, and as your service was, and shall be, so shall it be your reward. With these words, he gave Hans a lump of cold of gold as big as his head. Hans took his handkerchief from his pocket, wrapped the gold in it, and swung it over his shoulder and set out onto the road toward his home village. The big lump of gold bumped and thumped against his shoulder, and he began to wish it were not so heavy. As he walked along, a horseman came into sight. He trotted along gaily on a fine animal. Ah, said Hans aloud, what fine thing riding is. That one is seated as if it were upon a chair, while I must walk in the dust carrying this lump of gold. The rider overheard the word gold and recognizing Hans as foolish a fellow said slyly, if you like, we can give you an exchange. I'll give you my horse and you can give me your lump of gold. Ah, with all my heart, cried Hans. But I will tell you fairly that you are undertaking a quite heavy burden. The man dismounted before Hans could change his mind, took the gold and helped Hans onto the horse. Giving him the reins, he said, now when you go up, when you want to go faster, just click your tongue and cry, giddy up, giddy up. Hans was delighted when he found himself on the horse, riding along so gaily with no burden to carry. After a while, he thought he should go faster, so he cried, giddy up, giddy up, just as the man had told him. Off went the horse at a hard trot, and before Hans knew what to do about it, he was thrown head over heels into a ditch. The horse would run off if he had not stopped by a peasant who came along just then, driving a cow before him. Hans picked himself up and shook his fist at the horse and cried angrily, I'll never ride that animal again. Who would want such a prankish nag? Owning a cow is much more sensible. With a cow, you can have milk, butter, and cheese every day. Ah, what I wouldn't give for a cow. Well, said the peasant, I will exchange my cow for your prankish horse. Hans was delighted with the bargain, and so was the peasant. He quickly gave Hans the cow, swinging himself upon the horse, rode off in a hurry. Now Hans drove his cow steadily before him. As soon as he came to an inn, he halted and with great satisfaction ate all the lunch he had brought with him. After he drove his cow along the road in the direction of his mother's village, as the day grew hotter and hotter, Hans became very thirsty. Now this will never do, he thought. I will milk my cow and refresh myself. He tied her to a tree and having no pail, placed his cat below. But try as he would, he could not get a drop of milk. The impatient cow gave him such a kick in the head that he tumbled to the ground. Hans lay in the dirt, holding his head and moaning. Soon a butcher came along, pushing a wheelbarrow, in which there was a young pig. What on earth has happened? he exclaimed, helping poor Hans to his feet, and Hans told him all that had occurred. The butcher said, your cow will never give any milk. She is an old beast, and is only good for the butcher. Oh, said Hans, pulling his hair, his hair over his eyes. Who would have thought? I have no desire for a cow's meat. It's too tough. Now, a young pig like yours tastes like something. Well, now, said the butcher, I can make you an exchange if you will let me have, you can have my pig for your cow. Heaven reward you for your kindness, cried Hans, giving up the cow. He untied the pig from the wheelbarrow. Hans walked on again, pleased with everything that had happened, just as he wished. Presently, a boy overtook him, carrying a fine white goose under his arm. Good day, said the boy. Good day to you, said Hans. And he began to talk about his luck, about what profitable exchanges he had made. The boy told him he was carrying a goose to a christening feast. Well, just just feel how heavy it is, said the boy. Why, it has been fattened for eight weeks, and whoever gets a bite of this will have to wipe grease from each side of his mouth. Yes, said Hans, holding it with one hand. It is heavy, but my, my pig is no trifle either. While he was speaking, the boy kept looking on all sides and shaking his head suspiciously at length he broke out i wouldn't see much about that pig if i were you a pig has just been stolen from the mayor and i'm afraid that is the very same pig that's under your arm it will be bad for you if anybody catches you honest honest hands was thunderstruck and he exclaimed ah oh, heaven help me with this new trouble you know the neighborhood better than i do and and i and can hide you take my pig and i'll let and let me have your goose. That will be a risk, replied the boy, but I still do not wish to cause of your having such a misfortune. Quickly, he drove the pig off by a side path while Hans walked on toward home with the goose under his arm. 
As he came to the last village on the road home, Hans met a knife grinder seated beside a hedge, whirling his wheel round and singing, Scissors and razors and knives I grind, a sharper fellow is hard to find. Hans stopped to watch a bit and said, You appear to have very good business here, if I may judge your merry song. Yes, answered the grinder. A true knife grinder is a man who always has money in his pocket. But what a fine goose you have. Where did you buy it? I did not buy it at all. He took it. I took it for exchange for a pig. And where did you get the, pat, the pig? I exchanged that for a cow, which I exchanged for a horse. And the horse? I gave a lump of, of gold as big as my head for him. And the gold? That was my wages for seven years' work. I see you have bettered yourself with each trade, said the grinder. But now, if you could hear money rattling in your pocket as you walked, your fortune would surely be made. Well, how should I manage that? asked Hans. You become a grinder like me. In this trade, you need nothing but a grindstone, and I will give you a stone for your goose. Is that agreeable? How can you ask me? asked Hans. Why, I shall be the luckiest man in the world. Now, said the grinder, picking up an ordinary stone which lay by. Here you have a fine stone. Take it and use it very carefully. Hans took the stone, giving the grinder the goose, walked on sat with a satisfied air. I must have been born with a heap of luck, he thought. Everything just happens just as I wish. Soon, however, he began to feel very tired and hungry, too, for he had been on his way since daybreak. At last, he felt he was unable to go any further with the heavy stone. He sighed deeply and thought of a good thing would be that he would no longer need, if he would no longer need to carry it. Just then, he noticed a stream flowing nearby. He decided to sit down and rest and refresh himself. He carefully put the stone down and leaned over to scoop up some water in his hand, and he pushed the stone a little too far, and it went into the stream with a loud splash. As it sank beneath the water, Hans jumped up and clicked his heels for joy. Then he gave thanks that, without even trying, he'd been delivered from his burden. There was no other man under the sun as lucky as I, exclaimed Hans, and with a light heart he went gaily along until he reached his mother's house.